What's up guys, we're going to be taking a look at this lab reflected cross-site scripting into a JavaScript string with single quote and backslash escaped. All right, let's jump straight into the lab. So one of the most common things we do when looking for cross-site scripting attacks is to make use of an arbitrary search string and just see where it gets reflected back to us on the page. So let's type in search string, let's click search, Let's pop open the dev console and let's have a quick look for our search term. So we can see that there are three matches. So it's appearing inside the H1. It's also appearing inside JavaScript. So we can see there are some script tags there and we can see our search term inside a JavaScript statement. And finally, we can see it appearing inside an image tag. Now, this is not really for the purpose of an image, by the way, this is actually a type of search tracker. It's piggybacking off the function of image tags in HTML, which is they create a HTTP request for a given URL as defined in the source attribute. So this is dispatching a HTTP request with our search term. There's probably some kind of tracker on the back end, which is recording the types of searches that are being made. We're not too interested in this right now, we know that according to the lab title that we are going to be thinking about injecting into a JavaScript string, and um, we can see our JavaScript string here, var search terms equals Zen shell. So the first obvious question is whether we're going to be able to break out of that string. So the idea, if we start with a single quote, we might now be able to write JavaScript outside the context of that single quote. Now we know a string is being assigned to a variable. Common technique here is to try and concatenate to that string. So we can do something like plus alert. Now, if you've thought about the title of the lab, we'll know that this doesn't work. And that's because single quotes and backslashes are going to be escaped. Just as an example of that, let's search for this particular search term. Let's have a look where it appears on the page. We know it's inside the script tag somewhere. So here's our JavaScript. We have var search terms equals, and we can see that the single quote that we've provided, which is the second single quote there, is not terminating that string. And that's simply because it's been escaped. We can see a backslash there. In other words, that single quote exists inside the overall string, but we can see the plus alert also still exists inside the string. So we've been unable to break out of that JavaScript string and it's because single quotes are being handled correctly. They are being escaped. So they're not changing the functionality of that JavaScript. Something else we can sometimes try is actually escaping the backslash. So just by providing our own backslash, we can then escape the backslash that's obviously being provided by the back end here. So we can start with a backslash, then our single quote. The single quote is going to be escaped with a backslash, but since we provided our own backslash, then hopefully that actually escapes the backslash that's provided as part of the JavaScript. So let's just try that, say plus alert, and we can click search. Once again, let's take a quick look at our JavaScript. And we can see, unfortunately, the backslash that we provided has also been escaped. So the idea is hopefully we can use our backslash if it's not being escaped to escape the escaping of the single quote, which is being escaped. But as you can see, since our backslash is also being escaped, we can't use that to bypass the escaping that's happening on the server. So this is really what the lab title is about when it says that single quotes and backslashes are both escaped. As you can see, we can't break out of the string because the server is correctly escaping our input before including it in the JavaScript. Short version is we have to use a slightly different attack vector and we don't want to assume that all characters are correctly being escaped. So an example of another character that needs to be escaped in JavaScript is angle brackets. And that's because if they are not escaped, they have a tendency to interfere with the HTML. Do you remember JavaScript is written in a HTML context? Usually we have some HTML inside that HTML will have some JavaScript. And if angle brackets are not properly escaped within a JavaScript string, it can impact on the structure of the HTML. In other words, although we can't break out of the string, notice that we're also inside the context of script tags, we might be able to break out of the script tags themselves by simply using a close script tag. We can then open up our own script tag. We can call the alert function, and then we can close our script tag. Let's search for this. Notice we get an alert popped up to the page. So that's obviously worked. Let's have a quick look at the DOM. 
So notice we have script, we have the initial part of the JavaScript, var search terms equals, we have a single quote to open the string, then inside the string, we have a closed script tag. And we might think to ourselves, well, how can we include a closed script tag inside a JavaScript string? This might seem strange functionality, but as you can see, we've actually successfully closed the script tag there. We've opened a new script tag and we're able to call the alert function. Now this might seem like strange behavior. So we're just going to explore how the browser is dealing with unescaped angle brackets inside JavaScript. So we've created this HTML document. We have a heading, it's just a heading, bad string. We have a div with the ID of test. And what we're going to do is if the JavaScript doesn't crash, then we should get to the end of the document, which is going to call document.getElementById test. And it's got the inner text property set to afterwards. Now the interesting part of the document here is we have a script tag. We then define a JavaScript string that says, let my string equals hello. Then we have closed script tags inside the JavaScript string but the angle brackets are not escaped here. The H1 heading shouldn't technically work because it's inside script tags. So we're basically writing a H1 tag inside the context of JavaScript. Having said that, if the closed script tag inside the JavaScript string does successfully close the script tags, then the H1 with the title after heading is actually going to be displayed to the page. It won't be in JavaScript context. It will be inside a HTML context. So let's fire this up in the browser. Let's see what we get. Taking a look at the DOM there, notice that we get let my string equals hello. Then we have close script tag and we can see it's being interpreted as a HTML close script tag. What that means is the end of the string, this trailing single quote is now being interpreted inside a HTML context and we can see rendered to the page. And this H1 after heading is working just fine because it's inside HTML context. Now, in terms of the second script tags, these are in fact working. We can see afterwards rendered to the page. So we do get an error. The JavaScript does crash, but it only applies to that first set of script tags. So this of course mimics what the server was returning in our lab. What the server should have ideally been returning is this JavaScript string with escaped angle brackets. And in JavaScript, we can simply put the backslash before the angle brackets. Now, assuming this is interpreted as a JavaScript string, these H1 tags will now be inside a JavaScript context. And we'll also see that we have an open script tag, but technically the script tag from before has not been closed now if the JavaScript string is interpreted correctly as an actual string. So let's see what we get now that we've escaped the angle brackets. So taking a look inside our script tags there, we can see that the JavaScript string works just fine, but now we have this H1 inside the JavaScript context, which is basically producing an error, we get unexpected token error. Now the document.getElementById is inside that same set of script tags because they were never closed. Notice the open script tag is not even being passed as HTML because HTML is basically listening for a closed script tag. It's already got the open script tag. It's not interested in any additional open script tags. It's only interested in the closed script tag. What that means is since document.getElementById is inside this same set of script tags, well, the JavaScript's already errored out by this stage. So we're not getting afterwards reflected to the page either because this document.getElementId is not being executed correctly. One of the interesting features of this particular vulnerability is that it's uniquely caused by the fact that JavaScript is being executed within a HTML context inside the browser. If you take something like Node.js, for example, I've just jumped to a different system that has Node.js installed and let's just create a string. So let's say let my string equals, and we'll simply call it hello, but then we'll pass in a closed script tag. We don't get an error or anything like that. And if we type my string, you can see we get the value of the string reflected. No problem whatsoever. We can include closed script inside a JavaScript string. The problem is that within a HTML context, this is being interpreted as a HTML closed script tag. And that's why we've seen the behavior that we've seen, essentially because we have JavaScript operating within a browser inside the context of HTML. Okay, so quick summary here. We saw some techniques for trying to break out of a JavaScript string. First of all, using single quote, when we saw that single quote was correctly being escaped, we tried to escape the escaping by making use of the backslash. 
but the backslash was also being escaped. But then we found that we could actually make use of angle brackets, which weren't being escaped. And we've also seen how we can simply make use of a closed script tag from anywhere within JavaScript and essentially overrides the JavaScript. The browser doesn't care where we are within the JavaScript. It simply sees the closed script tags and says, okay, I was listening for that. I had an open script tag. I was listening for the closed script tag. There it is. That's it. JavaScript finished. Of course, if we can make use of angle brackets, we can simply open some fresh angle brackets and start running arbitrary JavaScript on the victim's browser. All right. Hope it was helpful. Thanks very much for watching, guys.